Well, first thing this morning, I want to congratulate uh, Matt and his friend over at the Enforcer YouTube channel for being the first ones to report on what happened last night in Iran. It was a it was very thorough, accurate, um, and for that reason, I'm going to, and I do not do this on my YouTube channel, but this time, I'll make an exception for this particular YouTube channel. I <clears throat> highly re recommend everyone who wants to be updated on the situation in the Middle East and around the world to subscribe to his ch their channel. Um, so essentially what happened uh, yesterday with the Jerusalem Post article that I um, read, that was a head fake. That's right. That was a head fake intended to make Iran believe that Israel was not going to strike back. And... Um, I am very happy to be an unwitting participant in that head fake. And folks, don't don't sit in judgment against me for participating in a head fake or for being glad that I participated in a head fake because you see, remember, Rahab, her righteousness, what got her saved? was the head fake <clears throat> where she turned uh, Jericho's soldiers a different direction away from the Israeli spies. <clears throat> so, so the previous video, whether or not anything happened last night the video that I put on before, that I posted before, stands, will stand the test of time, the day before. Um, I want to first of all go into not Joshua, okay? The name is not Joshua. The, the man who led the children of Israel into the promised land, his name was Yehoshua, not Joshua. And since that name has the name of the Abba, the Creator, in it, do not use corrupted versions of that name and do not re use replacements of that name. That is an abomination and it is tantamount to blasphemy. It does not mean the Lord is salvation. It means Jehovah is salvation. All right? Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of Jehovah, not the Lord, it came to pass that Jehovah spoke to Yehoshua, Ben Nun, Moshe's minister, saying, Moshe, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all the people, unto this land. Now, remember... There was a mixed multitude among them, and they went as well. Where I will give to them, even this children of Israel, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that I have given to you, like I said unto Moshe, from the desert and this Lebanon, even to the great river Jordan. No, 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 no. Let's try again, folks. 
from the desert and this Lebanon even to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and the great sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea, toward the west shall be your boundary or shall be your territory. <coughs> All right. Now, I want to show you something, folks. Do you know, this is the British mandate, this is the land that was promised to the Jews, for a homeland to the Jews, until uh, the British got greedy and found that there was oil. They believed that the Jews would not work with them like the Arabs would, so they parted the... Well, where is it? There it is. They parted his land. And they did this. Now, but wait, what proof do I have that I'm right? Well, we just read all the way to the great river Euphrates. All right, so uh, we are looking at, as you can see, the Euphrates River. All right. You can see Najaf is a city nearby, but Najaf is west of the Euphrates River, which means that land belongs to Israel. Now let us scroll down, or scroll out, and let us see. All the way to the great river Euphrates. That's right. The river Euphrates kind of goes like this. Now, it is written that all of the land of the Hittites Hittite Kingdom map. Let's look at it, shall we? Any of you um, study geography at all? Do you know what this is? You, you see the timeline here? 1300. So... In the days of Yehoshua, I have to type it in as Joshua, unfortunately. Time line days of oh okay, fourteen o six B C E. This is a hundred years later, so let's just go to 1406 then. And this, and there you have it, folks. Is it this one?
Well, you get the picture, folks. All right. So the land of Israel that was that was the land that was promised to Israel is much 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 larger than what you have been told. You see. So I'm going to make this video short. What I want to do is I want to point out to you videos to watch <coughs> concerning this event. It looks like they're going to do a tit-for-tat until Russia <coughs> gets involved. And it's unfortunate that only 12 people watched that video. Israel-Iran situation far more serious than you believe. Here's why. And um, this right here, uh, there's lots of videos that should be watched. But this one is a very good one. And in the light of what's going on right now, you should watch it. <clears throat> what has happened? Let me, let me try to explain this to you. What has happened now? This has gone from being a proxy war between Russia's main ally in the Middle East to a direct confrontation. Now they can sit there and pretend like it's not going to escalate any further. But that is not the human way. That is not one, what humans do. They don't de-escalate when it comes to attacks inside their own borders between each other. They do not escalate until one side quits or surrenders or is defeated you know what is written in Ezekiel 38 and 39 <coughs> you should know by now that Ezekiel 38 and 39 and the Yoel 3 war is the same war. You should know this, but there is one thing that I want to go over really quickly in Ezekiel 38. I went over it a little bit yesterday, but I want to pound the point home today that Israel will use all of their weapons of war against Magog. You see all this here, right? And you see that the number one, that the number one ally of Magog or Agog and Magog is what? Persia. Okay? Persia. That would be Iran. Alright, number one ally. Now, down here, it says something. In verse 21, I want you to pay attention to this. Proclaim a sword. Well, how do you proclaim a sword? This is a declaration of war. I will call for a sword, or I will declare war. 
in the mountains, in the hill country. Now, King James Version says, against them throughout all my mountains, says Adonai Jehovah. Now, the description here does say, every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will judge him with pestilence, with blood, and will rain upon his bands and all the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Now, is that just going to be inside the borders of Israel? No. I want you to understand something. <clears throat> if you're going to declare war against Russia, if Israel is going to declare war against Russia, you have to strike Russian homeland. What means does Israel have to strike Russia's homeland? They only have one. And that's nuclear weapons. And that's why, folks, this occurs. Remember, he says he's going to declare war on Magog. He's going to call for a sword against Magog. <coughs> it says in the hill country. That would be northern Israel. But look what it says here. I will send a fire on Magog. And among those that dwell secure in the coastlands, in the coastal regions. That would be Rome. Let me show you. The Roman Empire. There it is, the coastal regions. The vast majority of those are NATO countries. I told you, I showed you, and there are videos. You can peruse through my videos, you can see the one about the Samson option. And you should watch that one. It wasn't that long ago. It was a few weeks ago. Okay. So if Israel is going to declare war against Magog. We just read that Israel is going to declare war against Magog. And that fire will be sent to the land of Magog. The Samson option, that's another, that's another video. You should watch that video. In fact, what I think what I'll go ahead and do is this. I'll look in my YouTube channel. All right. Again. Uh, Samson option. Is it that one? It is this one. Please, I strongly recommend. In fact, if any of you are near a library, go find Ron Rosenbaum's book how the end begins the road to a nuclear war three okay and he provides the mindset of the Jews in Israel of who their enemies are and those of you in Europe it will surprise you but it shouldn't because you have been Israel's worst enemy. 
you Europeans. The road to nuclear war three that, in his opinion, in the aftermath of a second holocaust, Israel could bring down the pillars of the world, attack Moscow and European capitals, for instance, as well as the holy places of Islam. He writes that the abandonment of proportionality is the essence of the Samson option. Well, if you're going to declare war, the kind of war that what we just read about in Ezekiel 38, then yeah, if you are Israel, yes, you're going to have to abandon proportionality. And the only way Israel can do this is through the Samson option. Don't get angry with Israel for having to do this, for being forced to do this. Be angry with the Western countries and with Russia and with Iran and all of their hateful neighbors. All of Israel's hateful neighbors. Be angry with them. I Please read this, watch this video. Israel's Samson Option. That's all I have for today.